And I think that the second table is one of the most helpful things in the whole book. Because we don't know anything about the tempo for these pieces. They, they talk about how every, every piece has its own dance as a sort of invencio, but also its own affect. And you, as a performer, have to find how best to express both of those things. So there's never any exact tempo, but, but they give a, a, a very nice list of fastest to slowest dances. And one of the things we need to think about with Buxtehude already is, you see, the courant is way at the bottom of the list for the Saraband. And Buxtehude, you notice, uses courant, the French, but he's really writing Italian currentes. Most of them are. So that's helpful to know, because when you look through this list, you think, oh, am I supposed to play the courant as slow as the Saraband? No, you don't have to. So we'll look at currentes uh, tomorrow, perhaps. That's helpful. Now, on the next page, this is where things get really silly. But we need to think about arsis and thesis a little bit more. Arsis and thesis can happen at every level of what we do with these pieces. Arsis and thesis are Greek terms. And Marcin, in the Harmony Universelle, already in the 1600s, uses this to talk about strong and weak beats. So we can think about it as strong and weak. But as dancers, we can also think about, within a phrase, a place where you are more active and then more passive, or where you make a movement and then you literally rest. So this happens in, uh, usually in groups of two measures. And Table 3 gives this fantastic overview, first of the basic steps and then how they get put together. And the basic steps are the plié, the élevé, the jeté, and the glissé. And then there are a couple ways where you can step without uh, going up or down, or step without transferring the weight to another leg. And those are pretty rare. So the plié, the English called it the sink. <laughs> you just you, you bend your knees. And it happens before the beat. It's the preparation for every downbeat. And that's why the sarabands at slow tempos were so difficult. Because you had to elegantly bend quite low and then come up again. And um, the less professional dancers uh, preferred faster tempos for the sarabands so that the plié could be quite uh, short, uh, short articulation. And the élevé, so the plié, you can only do one thing. You can bend with both knees. And then how you come out of that with the élevé is varied. So you can um, step up onto the ball of one foot or the other foot. You can step up onto the balls of both feet. Or you can suddenly jump onto one foot or the other foot or both feet. So can we think about how those, what are those, four or five various ways of making a downbeat? They can be more arsic or more theic, right? So if you, and I don't, but, but, but if, the, if the play is like this, and then you want to go like that, that's pretty, that's pretty arsic, right? But if the plie is like this to this, that's very thick. So everything in between, from hopping clunk onto both, well, they meant clunk, but hopping onto the balls of both feet, to just standing up, there's a, there's a quite a variation of what we can do there. And, and the, the third step there, the jeté, is the most arsic, because out of a plié, you actually take a leap. So that, that's on the far end of arsic. And on the far end of thetic, we have the glissé, which means that you slowly, without lifting your leg, move your foot to a new position. So that's all there is. And then all, all of these, which we're, <coughs> you'll, if you go into this deeply yourselves, uh, you, you can, uh, I think, find lots of material you can use for your own uh, performances in, in dance, because all that happens now is step combinations of those things. And they're codified uh, with French names that, in fact, survive as a codified system into modern ballet. There's a very direct line, as I said yesterday. 
Okay, next page. Now let's start talking about the Sarabans. Look at the middle first. This is a typical, these are typical Saraband rhythmic patterns. And I think we need to kind of physicalize these somehow. So if we, if we look at A, can, can you all, if the beat, if the tempo is one, two, three, can we say A together on the ta, something like that, just to see if it works? One, two, three. Ta, 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 ta. Nice, lovely. So that's two measures. Can you give them one of those terms? Is one more strong and one more weak? We can do. Yeah, I think the first measure is more more sick. More sick. Yeah. And the second one is more thick. Absolutely. <clears throat> and that's the that's the basic two bar phrase for. Um, for a Saraband. And the, the... What about B? I think B is... If you look at this, this top level, you can see that uh, Meredith and Natalie also... It's, it's a lovely system, and I think we can use this right in our scores. Because if you write a little a, it means it's arsic, but not really, really arsic. <laughs> and the second one is a little a, and the third one is a big a, and the fourth one is a big t. So what we have is pretty active, pretty active, really active, and really passive for a four-bar phrase. So can we perform speaking on top b with that form? So little a, little a, big a, big t. Two, three. Ta, 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 ta. And if you played a phrase that way, it would sound like a serenade, which you will very soon. Uh, great. Why don't we have a couple of volunteers now uh, to play this third example in a duet. Who wants to? Or somebody close. You know? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so you can make these uh, but, Yeah, you'll just be the soprano. Uh, volunteering in terms of being actually forced. Yes. Who else can I force? Steph on your clothes. So I have to, you, have to, you have to play the bass line. This is, underneath we have a, a sort of modern notation for what the step patterns are for the Saraband. And so if you remember from the page before, at the very top, all of these basic steps have a mark that can be used in a score. So the basic step for the plié is a little v, and the basic step for coming up out of the plié is a big upward thingy. So if you look at this notation, you can actually already imagine, I think, what the dance might look like a little bit. So there is a plié before the piece starts, and an elevate that also involves a glissé. So it's a very active one, and the rest of the bar is quite passive. So this is not the pattern we just practiced. So the first bar is quite thetic, I think, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second and third bar can be pretty arsic. And uh, so Shinon will um, play the soprano on the upper middle, mm -hmm. and then Stefan can support her with the bass line. And let's just play the first four bars and see if we can go. Thedic, arsic, arsic, thedic. Nice, great. So. You know, you, you made a, a, an important choice to make the, the third bar more, more accented than the second one, right? Yeah. Let's, let's try just to hear the difference that, that both of them are, are equally uh, arsic. 
So we'll put a big A over both bar 2 and 3 and see what it sounds like. Good, okay. Did you prefer one or the other? The first one was very elegant, wasn't it? Yeah. Then the, the, was the second two obvious? Predictable. Predictable. Let's do the, the last four bars and you just decide what to do and tell us afterwards. Nice. Great. So that's almost a, I wonder if we could squeeze a female out of there. Probably not. Can you try? I don't know about yeah. doing this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just try it and, and let Shinon do whatever she wants to do and see if it works. So yeah, the last one works. <laughs> Sorry about that. Nice! Yeah! Um, well, okay, now you get to tell us what you were thinking. Which bars in the last four were arsic and which were fake for you? Uh, the most arsic bar is the third one. Oh, the okay, yeah, yeah, the second to last one. Um, and then the second one was less arsic but not complete. Yeah. That was the same pattern that Devon liked from the beginning. So, so you see, actually, that this, the rhythmic pattern is exactly the same, mm -hmm. right? And so our job is to make the second half a, a little bit different than the first half, right? So if you play your whole, uh, the, the whole serenade now, and, and do the, the pattern of small A and then big A for bar two and three, but maybe bar three can't be as big as the second to last one either, so that there's a climax, yeah? <laughs> nice. Great. Now, can we can we have an improvised version that has um uh, Stefan playing continuo so that you just play maybe uh, occasionally just a third above the bass. That's probably enough. Oh, yeah. uh, and then, you know, mm -hmm. when, you, um, when you get to the beat two that's accented, you can play a little trill or a more mm -hmm. And you can make, the, you can use that to, to make the really arsic measures more. So I have to play two words. You can you do whatever you like, but it would be nice to have at least two sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>